Hello viewers of the YouTube, my name is Karen McKenzie, I'm an Australian citizen, I'm a very proud Australian citizen, I'm immensely proud of my Australian heritage, third generation Australian. My family have been in Maitland for many years, for most of the 20th century actually, and I moved to Sydney back in the late 70s because I was a wild young thing and I wanted to explore my sexuality. I'm 63 years old, so really I'm not, not quite a Karen, am I? Karen's more like 43. I, I, I said I might be a Dorothy, but Dorothy's are probably more like 83. I'm more like a Margaret. Yes, Margaret. But anyway, this is, this is Ask Karen. So a few of you have sent in some questions on this internet, and I'm going to answer them. They were pathetic questions. You wouldn't expect anything anything more from the youth of today. Really soft, weak uh, individuals who lack resilience. They, they are sanctimonious. They stand on their high horse and they love to talk down to people who disagree with them. So anyway, let's get into these questions. Question number one. Hashtag ask Karen, why are you so, so stuck up and full of yourself? Why do you hate the younger generation? Well, I believe I've already answered that question with my introduction, haven't I? Um, I don't think I'm full of myself. I think it's a thing called self-confidence and I'm very self-assured. I'm very assertive and that comes from a lifetime of, you know, in my youth, I didn't necessarily get my way. And well, now I talk extremely loudly when I need to and I, and I always do get my way now. It's about being confident, being self-assured and not being afraid to go for what you deserve and what you want. In fact, I know that I know that from four failed marriages, I've figured that out. Why do I hate the younger generation? Well, we would be here for ten hours if I were to talk about a list of reasons of why I despise the younger generation. But well, there's a there's a myriad of reasons. Quite frankly, I think your your sanctimonious political views out in the streets, rioting and online talking down to people who disagree with you, well, that's part of the reason why. I wouldn't say I hate, I think I strongly dislike the younger generation. I know when I was young, I was quite a go-getter and I was quite an activist myself. I, I believe I voted Labour a few times and you know what? I, I understand the mentality. I understand the mentality that the world is against you, but really it's time to grow up. Some of the millennials are turning 40. Grow the bloody hell up, millennials. Grow up. Not everything is against you and there's not this oppression everywhere. You're just a sook. Toughen up. Harden up. Question uh, number two. Hashtag ask Karen. Oh my goodness. When was the last time you got your pussy ate? Well, I'm extremely offended by that question. Not, not, not because of the content of the question, but just the lack of grammar. I mean, this is just atrocious. No wonder our education system is falling behind. I can only assume this is an adult. And there isn't a question mark here. There's ya, yeah, ya, yeah, eaten. Eaten is the past tense of eat, not ate. Ate would be if, if, you know, I ate something. When was the last time your, oh, oh actually I got, uh, when was the last time you had your pussy eaten? That would be the correct grammar. When was, dear, it should be dear Karen. You know, there's, there's a lack of decorum and politeness in this, in this society, so Dear Karen, not Ask Karen, that's very aggressive. Dear Karen, comma, when was the last time you had your pussy eaten? That would be the correct way to phrase that sentence, young man, so I'm not even going to answer such a disgraceful attempt of a question if you can't even spell properly. But look, I can't really remember. I'd have to go far back into my memory bank. I think my second husband did it a few times, but he wasn't particularly good. Um, I will say that, but, you know, when I was in my youth, I really liked the exotic men and they were quite, well, they were quite talented at that. Let's just say that much. Ask Karen, what do you think about the protests that have been happening? Well, they've really destroyed Melbourne, haven't they? They've put Melbourne in a, quite a folly because there's a second wave and it's threatening the rest of Australia because of these disgraceful, youthful activist morons who think that yelling as loudly as they can, tearing down statues of fabulous men is the way to go about things. That's not how you enact change. Change is enacted through civil disagreement and 
convincing people, not yelling at them. You know, this isn't, we're not in some third world country. You don't need to act as though the government is against you. And I've seen enough of Scott Morrison. He's a fabulous gentleman. I know he's definitely not against me, but I'm appalled by them. I'm quite frankly appalled by the protests. Anyone who went to those protests should have their Australian citizenship revoked immediately. All lives matter. All of them. What a silly sentiment. Black lives matter. All lives matter. Period. Ask Karen, what makes you happy? Well, I like a good rosé in the evening. I indulge in a bit of chocolate. And I like it. You know what? Hugh Grant. I thoroughly enjoy Hugh Grant's movies. Not not so much now. I think he's getting a bit old. But back in the early 2000s, you know, he's a bit below. He's, he's before. He's, well, he's not really part of my generation. But I found him right rather handsome and charming and, you know, I'll get all excited when the new Hugh Grant movie came out. Uh, What else makes me happy? Spending time with my lovely cat, uh, drinking a lovely Earl Grey tea, sitting out in the balcony as the sun shines upon my skin. Yes, that's nothing, that's the quintessential Australian moment of happiness, isn't it? What else makes me happy? Achievement? Uh, Well, not, not so much accolades, but achievement. You know, I think I've done very well with my... Well, I've, I've, I've had three children. The first two were to my first husband, and they're, they're doing well. Well, my son's in the mines, and my, my daughter... Quite frankly, I have lost contact with her, but she's, she's you know, she's off, the, she's off the pipe. And she's turned her life around, so I'm quite proud of that. And my other daughter, uh, she's 15. She's on the bloody TikTok all day, but I'm sure she'll turn it around eventually. And I'm very proud of my children. I remember when I went to the Wit Sundays a few years ago, I was very happy. That was before a lot of the bad things came out about my third husband. But you know what? Going on a lovely holiday, that makes me happy. So there you go. Holidays, tea, cats. Well, in my youth, I suppose what made me happy was going to the disco and doing doing a lot of illicit drugs and having casual fornications all over the place. I'm sure a lot of the youth indulge in that right now, but, you know, by the time I hit my 30s, I realised that was very shallow and meaningless. So I grew the hell up. That's what makes me happy. And I would recommend uh, any of the young viewers watching this who seem to think that the protests are some sort of, you know, powerful... uh, You know... As though there's some sort of comparison to the civil rights protests of the 60s. A few of my elder girlfriends were in the civil rights protests of the 60s. Now, they were a very polite, organised, healthy protest. This is just a rabble. I mean, these are riots. There's, There's a sort of real, just gross disregard for our wonderful men and women of the police force. And quite frankly, I'm appalled. I'm appalled at the whole thing. We need to unite as a country and overcome this bloody Chinese virus. In the meantime, some people are protesting about it. And and don't get me wrong, I saw that video. That was tragic. But for goodness sake, calm down. It's gone too far now. It's the reason now a lot of elderly people might die in Melbourne because of this bloody protest. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. But look, those are the things that... A range of things makes me happy, but... I wouldn't really just put it down to one one simple thing, but if there was something that, well, is guaranteed to make me happy, a rosé and, and watching Hugh Grant, that makes me happy. Thank you for watching. That was Ask Karen. Hope you enjoyed it. I might do this again in a few weeks. I didn't, didn't really enjoy that too much, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and um, yes, I believe Neil's got a message, so stay tuned. Okay, thank you for watching. Hashtag Ask Karen. That's the 10th Ask Neil video that we've done. Yay! Congratulations. Um, I did read the comments on the last video. Most of them were very positive. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad a lot of you do like the beard. Uh, I do know the difference between gender and sex. And I like the topic, um, fall of the traditional media. So that'll be the next Ask Neil topic. Fall of the traditional media. And also, I, 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 I can see that some of you took issue to my analogy about 
the key and the lock. And look, that's fine. You're allowed to not like what I say. I'm allowed to not like what you say. I'm never going to be one of those, uh, oh, fucking snowflakes, toughen up. Nor am I going to be, oh, I'm so sorry if I hurt you. So that that's free speech. Um, hopefully we can, uh, we can bridge that divide one day. And speaking of which, I'm planning to start a new podcast on the second channel where I talk to a relationship psychologist slash sexologist. I'm not making this up. And herself and myself will talk about the various issues uh, in regards to gender today. So there seems to be uh, a lot of uh, arguments online about whether women have it worse, men have it worse, oh, annoying feminists, MRAs, this, that, that. So we're going to flesh out those. Ask Neil is now going to exist on the second channel because the second channel is all going to be me being serious now. So it's going to it's gonna be the, the podcast with me and Jordan, the new podcast, and Ask Neil, where I, I, I'm not necessarily my comedic self. I delve into some cultural, social, political issues, still with a lighthearted tone. Whereas on this channel, it's going to be all sketches and Ask characters. So... I might do an Ask Karen, Ask Charles, like I've already done, or next week we'll do an Ask Cog Dog. So look, lucky you guys, you get you get two of these videos every week. One on the second channel where I'm myself, one on this channel where I'm being hilarious, and next week we'll do Ask Cog Dog. So I know that was all a bit confusing, but in the comments, all you need to know is this, in the comments, either um, Ask Neil about the fall of the traditional media, I'll answer questions about that, it's a topic I'm very interested in, or ask Cog Dog and ask him whatever you want. Thank you very much. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to the second channel if you haven't already. Follow me on TikTok. Uh, I'm nearing half a million followers on TikTok, which is insane. Uh, this TikTok will overtake this channel soon, which will be unbelievable. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>